considerations. St. Bartholomew, apostles that went to India, and that if Bartholomew went to India, and in fact, where Bartholomew went to India is Bombay, the main city of India, and St. Bartholomew of Armenia, not far from Mount Ararat, and uh, there in Armenia, he was martyred for the Catholic faith and was killed there in Armenia. And there also, St. Bartholomew is the easy apostle to pick out if you see the Saint. Uh, I mean, the, the, the picture of the Last Supper, the Twelve Apostles with our Lord at the Last Supper, uh, sitting on the side of the table and leaning on it, that's St. Bartholomew. So this is the, the Apostles. Judas is the one who's easy to pick out. He has the, he has the coins in his hand, and Judas is the one that betrayed. So he was, uh, he was crucified, he cut all of his skin off with a knife, and then at the very end, beheaded him. And that's how St. Bartholomew died. And so he was the Apostle that was skinned with a knife, and hence, you see the picture of the, the, the north of India. St. Thomas went all throughout India, to the south of India, and, and died in the southern. And he came to India before St. Uh, Thomas, and he went back and was martyred uh, before St. Thomas also. And so that uh, so that St. Bartholomew was a great apostle. And all, it, it, there's a description of him that is given to us. So there was a devil by the name of Berith. And the, the, the and he was the, he was deceiving the people in that northern part of India, and that he would torture uh, people, and then he would say, "Come to my temple to be cured." And they would come to his temple to be cured, and he would stop. Uh, Thomas came. Thomas came uh, into the place, and Bereth was required to speak, and he said he was not able to do his his wickedness, and he was going to be thrown out. The follower of God is here. His name is Bartholomew. And they said, how will we recognize him? They said, well, you will see a man with curly hair, and with a flat nose, and a fair face, and a dark black beard, and he wears the last 20 years. But it never gets worn out, and it never, it never wears out, and he, and he speaks all languages. Whatever place he goes to, he can speak the language. So remember the 12 apostles, they were given the gift of tongues. And the real gift of tongues means the ability to speak a language that you don't understand. Nowadays, these modern idiots in the charismatic movement, the followers of Satan, and many of them just deceivers, they say you have the gift of tongues. And what is the gift of tongues for them? It means simply to make babbling noises. Anyone can make babbling noises. But if I go into India and I meet a Tamilian from Tamil Nadu and I speak perfect Tamil, I have the gift of tongues. And if we go to France and speak perfect French, I have the gift of tongues. And how do you know the gift of tongues? If, it, if, if an Indian comes here and he speaks perfectly, he says, and he can understand every word we say, that's called the gift of tongues. The 12 apostles had the perfect gift of tongues, all 12 of them. Everyone they met, no matter what language that person spoke, they could speak that language. So they weren't bilingual, trying to speak four languages. You're quadrilingual, whatever that means. If you speak three languages, you're trilingual. If you speak two languages, you're bilingual. So that the but 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 the but the but the Saint Tom Bartholomew, he thousands of languages. He spoke every language on earth and perfectly. So that whenever he met anyone, he was able to speak to them in their language. Now what did he speak in their language? He spoke the same truth. How do we know we have the, we can speak the same language? So we have here the uh, uh, this the, the, this a book. We'll pick it up. Mm. How do I know that I can speak different languages? If I can say book, and you and, and you know that that refers to this thing, and I say to you also liber, which is the Latin way of saying book, then I know that you can speak a different language. I can say this thing. I can say liber. I can point to this thing, and I can say book. And so when I say Liber and I say book, it refers to the same thing. That means I can speak two languages, at least about that word. And so what happens, how do we know we speak multiple languages? When we can say exactly the same thing with precisely the same meaning in multiple tongues. The devil, what he does is, he even speaks one language. And when he says something, and he says it again, and he says it again, he just said three different things. That's the demonic way of tongues. The demonic way of say the same thing over and over again and have a different meaning every time. But the true gift of tongues, which the apostles had, 
was to speak the same exact meaning. The correct Bible is perfect, the one of St. Uh, Jerome, and then you can have a, a, a Bible in any other language. And if they say exactly the same thing, and it matches the exact same words written by the Holy Ghost through the hands of the human authors, 16. And in number three, what does it say? Serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed, H-E-R, her seed, and thou shalt lie in wait for her heel, and she shall crush thy head. And you can translate that into many languages. We you know what they've done now? They've changed it to he shall crush the head and not she. That's not the same. And that's one of the easy passages to check. Why? Because Satan doesn't like the idea of his head being crushed by a woman. And most guys don't. But the fact is, that is what God has determined is going to happen. You used a woman in order to deceive Adam, I will use a woman to destroy you. And it says it that in the sacred scripture. How do we know their different languages are correct? When each language says exactly the same thing. So when St. Bartholomew spoke the Marathi language, as he was there in, in uh, the, the land of the Marathi in northern uh, India, which is now the place of Bombay, he spoke perfect Marathi that they spoke 2,000 years ago with the accent of that time. And what did he say in the Marathi language? He said, Jesus Christ is God. And there is only one God, and he has destroyed all of the false gods, including this liar of devil, which is called Bereth. And Bereth shall be tied up and cast down into hell. And then he tied up Bereth and cast him down into hell. And Bartholomew preached the true word of God to those people. And that word never changes. And what also? The practice of God never changes also. He made a religion which is one. And a religion which has the same means of saving souls from the time that he left this earth 2,000 years ago until the very ending of time. He gave us, for instance, this holy sacrifice of the Mass. What happens at the Mass? It is the priest offering a worship and sacrifice to God in the name of our Holy Mother of the Church, in the name of all souls, and offering worship to God as priest, and he is offering a victim. And the victim who must be sacrificed is Jesus Christ. He is Jesus Christ, priest, who offers a sacrifice. And he is Jesus Christ, victim, who is sacrificed. He died on the cross. He died. He is the sacrifice and the priest. He is the victim and the priest. In the Old Testament, the priest offered a lamb. The priest offered a lamb, but the priest did not offer himself. Whereas in the New Testament, the priest must sacrifice himself. But the, the sacrifice is the same, the priest and the victim. So St. Bartholomew came and offered this same Mass in India. St. Thomas came later and offered the same Mass and taught the exact same thing. The exact same so Bartholomew. He was only passing through the land of St. Bartholomew. But when he passed through that land, he told them the same St. Bartholomew. How are we going to recognize him? You will see a man nose and a black beard and a white tunic and a white garment with short sleeves and, and little gems on the, on the sleeves. And it's the same one that he wore every day. And he genuflects and kneels on that garment over a hundred times a day. And yet the garment is never damaged. And you will recognize him because he is always cheerful. He is always joyful. And he is good to his enemies. You will recognize him. Furthermore, Bartholomew goes where he wills. And if he doesn't want you to see him, you will not see him. But if he does want you to see him, you shall. And he is here now. And so the people left and they went looking for him. And for two days they could not find him. Then he finally showed himself before them and then told them to leave behind the false gods and come to the true God. But it's interesting that what the devil was required to say about the apostle. The apostle wears the same garments. See, they, we wear the same garments. This is a chasuble. The same garments that we have worn for 2,000 years. And the, and, the, and the maniple and the stool. These sacred garments. Some of them go back to the Old Testament. And we wear the same garments when we go to the altar. And these garments show that we are connected to God. 
And they also show that we are connected to our ancestors all the way back to Jesus Christ. Because St. Peter had to go in houses. And remember when St. Peter said Mass in a house, it wasn't quite the same as when we're saying Mass in a house. There had to be guards looking out the window for the Romans to come and kill them. And you know, when the English had the rules, I always take everything down right after Mass. When they had Mass in England and Ireland, the priest would say Mass. And everyone had a job. So there's 15 of 18 of us here. So there's everyone had a job. If the English soldiers come to the door, the mother of the house walks at 0.1 miles per hour towards the door. <laughs> While she's walking 0.1 miles, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. The priest picks up the chalice. And each man has a job. Somebody comes and takes away the, 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 uh, what do you call it? the cloths. Another one takes away the candles. And the priest puts down the chalice into a hidden box. He immediately, if he has time, removes his vestments. If not, they go straight into There's a hidden hole in the house. They open up the hole, and there's a hole in the floor. He goes straight into the hole. And within 30 seconds, this entire altar is taken down. And there's also a girl in charge of coffee cups and teacups and silverware. Because when the English soldiers would come in, they would say, there's 15 of you in this house. How come there's 16 cups up? Mm. Why are there 16 cups and there's only 15 of you? And how come there's extra silverware? So someone would immediately grab the extra cup, clean it, put it away. It would make sure that there was no sign that there was an extra person there, and they would go inside of the hole. About 10 years ago, or a little more than, not that long ago, in England, they were doing a digging up of an old house. And they dug up a hole in the house, and there was a priest dead. He was laying with his full vestments that I have on right now, holding the ciborium, and he was a skeleton. Because what happened was, the English came to his house. He went, hid, he went and hid in the hole, and they locked him in the hole. But then they went through the house, and they couldn't find the priest. And they didn't trust the people, so they arrested all the people, took them to prison, and martyred them. And they martyred many. And there was no one to take the priest out of the hole. So he died inside of the hole. He died with his vestments. He died for the faith. He died holding that ciborium. And they found him only a few years ago. And for the last 2,000 years, St. Bartholomew was killed for the faith. But what did Bartholomew do? Bartholomew came into a place of a king. And he said that his daughter was filled with the devil in Armenia. And he drove out the devil. He, says, you have to be, he said, you have to be rid of your gods. And the, and the king said, if my god is not God, you get rid of him. And so instantly, the statue of his god came crashing down to the floor and broke into pieces. And then he believed. And he entered into the true faith of St. Bartholomew, the Holy Roman Catholic faith. And later on, that king resigned his kingship. And he became a bishop of the Catholic Church. And he himself died a martyr. He said, I don't want to be a priest like Bartholomew. And he gave up his kingship. He said goodbye to his wife. Remember, if the wife gets permission, the husband can go and get and become a priest. So he, he, he said goodbye to his wife. He became a priest and a bishop of the church and died a martyr several years later. He resigned his kingship. His brother was also a king in a small kingdom nearby. And he went to his, went to his brother, and it, and, and it was his brother that martyred him. The brother said to him, if your if you're God really is God, then destroy the statue of my God. No problem, he destroyed it immediately. And instead of converting, the king became very angry. And he, and he crucified him quickly upside down, removed him from the cross, and had him skinned alive. And then he had him to be, uh, to be, to be uh, beheaded. And so St. Bartholomew became a martyr. And after that, the good king was going to become a, a bishop and a priest. The bad king and those involved in the kingship, they were all died. They all died the same day that Bartholomew died. And then the people repented and joined the church of St. Bartholomew. And they buried him and protected his bones. And now his bones are in Rome. They were gone from Armenia, and they're now in Rome. And so Bartholomew, he taught the same faith. He spoke many languages, but in every language he said the same truth. Now there are not only many languages... But there are many generations. So 2,000 years ago, they spoke the same words. Guess who we're supposed to speak now? The same words. I am not to speak different words in 2020 than what was spoken back in the year, the year 120. 
or the year 1020, or the year 1820, or in the future in the year 2525. It is necessary to speak the whole divine truth, and it must be the same truth. Then St. Paul says, Tradidi quote achepi, I have handed down that which I have received. We must hand down the same truth we received and pass it on from generation to generation until the end of time. And Bartholomew taught the truth in many languages. Now he has bishops and priests that have followed him the last 2,000 years. We must do as Bartholomew did and speak the truth, the same truth he spoke in many languages without changing any meaning of any word, and to every generation until the ending of time. So God bless you all, in the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.